let's dive into National 2 East, shall we now, Ben? And in terms of sort of talking points from yourself, I know we highlighted a number of different games uh, last week on the uh, on the show. I know uh, for your picture game in the rugby paper, you were at Dorking versus Barnes, I believe. And yet again, that fixture certainly delivered, didn't it? Yeah, fantastic match. Um, those two definitely showing why they're they're sort of the two that have pipped for the promotion the most. Um, Dorking will be obviously thrilled to have won that that, that battle and just see off their that their rivals. It shows that how close it is between those two sides uh, with just such a, such a narrow margin. Um, and Tombridge Juddians are looking very strong at the moment. Victorious at, at Colchester's first game at this level. Um, Colchester were competitive in parts, continuing to score a lot of points. Um, at Tombridge, you know, one of the sides that have pipped for the title, that they sort of demonstrated their their credentials with with a real sort of forceful attacking display. Uh, Guernsey have just pipped um, Westcom Park to the post in a, in a real thriller. Again, one of those matches that I mentioned at the start that keeps surprising me how close these games are and how you know real sort of fine margins between the between these sides. Um, Oxford Harlequins pushed hard, but were just beaten by um, Old Albanian. Um, the boat, you know, you know, Old Albanian you expect to, to be up there in, the, in sort, of, sort of top half this season. Oxford, have, I think, have, have been quite a impressive side since, since uh, moving up the divisions, but haven't though. Have really shown have, have been the most impressive. And you know, arguably, you know, certainly up there with Rotherham Titans as one of the most impressive promoted sides. They continue their impressive work with you know back to back wins, beating Worthing. Canterbury looking very strong, victorious away at Seven Oaks. You know, Canterbury were one of the the signs. I think it was Jacob Ford mentioned that he thinks that they'll they'll be up there in the, in the title mix. Um, and Henley Hawks. Well, speaking of Jacob Ford, Barry St Edmunds still yet to record that first win of the season. Henley, obviously, again another sign that that tip for the tip for the, the title contender. There's just so many National Two East that it really is wide open. Barry will be disappointed not to have picked up a win yet, and we're hoping to address that. Um, or they have had two matches on the road so far. So that back at home, their first game of the season next weekend, where they'll they'll really expect to um, get a win on the board and then and then build from there. But yeah, really interesting stuff across the board at National Two East. Like I said, so many signs that that you, you fancy to to be in the mix for the title. It'd be enthralling to see how it all plays out. It's going to be really, really interesting. I think we'll have a look at the table shortly, but it's really interesting to see the, the structure of the table at the moment. You know, Barnes and Dorking, second and third last year, they both won one game apiece. Obviously, you know, they played each other at the weekend, but, you know, no, not a 100% start for either of those sides. You did mention Tunbridge Juddians at the top, a really, really strong start to the season for them. Curtis Barnes, yet again, the man in the spotlight, another hat-trick for him to start the season against uh, a much-improved Colchester side. I know they were pretty... They took a lot of plus points, actually, Colchester, from that uh, game against uh, Tunbridge Juddians at 48-26 defeat. But, yeah, TJ is looking very strong in the opening stages of this campaign. You mentioned Canterbury as well there. There, Ben, last season, they... they they sort of progressed in, in in a really good way to to finish. I think it was seventh in the end, so it was definitely stepped forward. But they are seemingly taking strides forward in the opening two rounds of the season. That a great Kent Derby victory over Seven Oaks, twenty seven fourteen win. I believe Saracens' is Ben Earl was watching on. We know he has connections with Seven Oaks, uh, but he would not have had the smiles on the faces in that Kent Derby. It would have been those of Canterbury wearing those smiles. So great win for Canterbury. But I was thinking about this actually, Ben, on, on Saturday evening up there alongside Canterbury, who we just talked about, and Tunbridge Juddians, which you mentioned, are Guernsey Raiders. So they've picked up two wins from two. They are 10 points from 10. And having been lucky enough to visit Guernsey last year, um, speaking to director of rugby, Jordan Reynolds, he was basically saying that, you know, they want to be a top half team. They want to be knocking on the door of the top six. And I think crucial to that is going to be their home form at Fort Lane. So to a beating Worthing and Westcom Park is a really strong start for Guernsey Raiders. And they'll be hoping to build on that going into round three. So just to pull up the table in front of me, in terms of Canterbury, Tunbridge, Judians and Guernsey, two wins from two, Maximum Halls, for all three of those sides. I'll be looking to, to continue that uh, going into round three. Uh, ben quite rightly mentioned, haven't the newly promoted side who we featured in round one uh, with Rob Matthews and Will Knight. Two wins for them 
couldn't have asked for a better start to life back in uh, level four back in National 2 and uh, Henley Hawks as well, Luke Allen's side um, rounding off those teams who have picked up two wins from two to begin the campaign. So uh, yeah, really strong start for the all five of those sides going into round three. So speaking of round three, Ben, um, what kind of uh, stands out for you in terms of the fixtures this week? Where will the rugby paper be uh, heading to, to cover in National 2 East? Yeah, there's some intriguing matchups, um, obviously in in in, e in e each. Um, so we, they're very difficult to call, I think. Um, but I think the one the one that I've gone for is is Haven against against Guernsey. Um, Guernsey, obviously, Pippin Westcombe Park last last weekend to the post. They, they they just sneaked to win there, two from two at home. How can they go on the road? Oh, that's the question. And Haven are absolutely flying. I mean. Back to back, back to back wins. They couldn't have dreamt of a better start. Can they get that? Can that continue at home to Guernsey? Well, I think they'll probably fancy their chances in in that match. Um, so that so that that for me is is the standout fixture. But some some good matches across the board and a lot of teams with uh, points to prove. Yeah, I know. I know when we had Rob Matthews of Havens on the show in the first week, he mentioned they had that uh, winning song. Uh, don't they haven't a coming up the hill so to have had that a rendition of that twice already this season would have pleased uh, those of a haven't persuasion yet yeah, really good game to to highlight ben as we said winning starts for both of those clubs um going into round three so let's just have a look at the over fixtures barnes versus colchester we touched on colchester certainly an improvement on last week barnes involved in another thrilling game against dorking uh, back at home this weekend to welcome the nearly promoted side uh, Barry st edmonds against oxford harlequins sort of ben mentioned before so two bonus points for Oxford Harlequins last weekend against Old Albanian in that 38-32 defeat Berry hoping to get off the mark in their home outing on Saturday afternoon Canterbury versus Worthing Canterbury the early league leaders scoring tries and points for full at the moment and they will be looking certainly and they'll be hot favourites actually to make it three wins from three at the weekend Haven versus Guernsey Benz uh, really nicely summed up there. Old Albanian versus Dorking as well at Woolham's. That will be a really interesting game. Dorking, Dorking looking to back up last week weekend's win over Barnes. Tunbridge Judians versus Seven Oaks is another Kent derby for us to sink our teeth into. Um, contrasting fortunes of both sides at the moment. Seven Oaks the only uh, only side without a point in National Two East, so they'll be looking to. Um, open their account this weekend and West Park versus Henley to round things off Henley uh, looking for the third win on the bounce but West Park never an easy place to go uh, especially with West Park winning uh, against Bury St Edmonds on the opening day of the season so it won't be an easy one for Hawks that one on Saturday afternoon <laughs>